You'll have to watch to the end to see that. Hello everybody, it's Doom here, and today we are going to be turning this rusty old garbage can into a full-on pneumatic professional Halloween animatronic. And trust me, it looks crazy. So without further ado, let's get right to it. is that it's going to be sort of like trash can trauma, well, almost exactly like that. And basically, there's just going to be a head that pops right out of this garbage can and kind of slams it down like that. Um, yeah, it's going to be very loud and very stuttering. So first off, I'm just going to take this piece of scrap wood and I'm just going to cut it so it matches the diameter of this garbage can and then I'm going to screw it across. So let's get right to that. Alright, so we're just going to take our pencil and mark it right here, and it doesn't really matter, it doesn't need to be that precise, because we can always trim more off if we need to. And now it's time to bring the saw out. Here we go. We've got our wood cut like this, and it can easily fit in the garbage can like that. Let's move on to the next step. Next, I'm going to take my cylinder um, that I just got this from Princess Auto. And you'll also notice that I also have these little fittings on them right here. And these actually just control the airflow. So how fast the cylinder will go up and go down. These are optional though. It's probably best to have them. Um, but basically, I'm just going to take this cylinder and I'm going to screw it right onto this piece of wood right in the middle and I'm going to try to make it so it doesn't move at all, so it's nice and snug. But hold up, before we get too into pneumatics, we need to learn how exactly do pneumatics work. This is the air compressor. It's basically the heart of the pneumatic system, and it's what pumps all the air through the hoses. And much like a heart, without this, you wouldn't be able to live. Well, the pneumatic system wouldn't be able to live. So this is definitely step one. If you don't have one of these, it will not work. Next, of course, we have air hoses. These are basically veins, and this is what carries the air through the entire system. Just like your veins carry your blood throughout your system. Then next, we have the solenoid. Now, this can be manually controlled, or it can be controlled with a controller, which I'll show you how to do later. But this is basically the brains, well, when paired with a controller, because this decides where the air is going to go. The air first goes into here, and these are the mufflers so the air can escape. And then this, these are two other fittings, and one way the, it will always be going through, and the other way when you press a button, or when power is sent to here, the air will go through this one. And last, but certainly not least, we have the pneumatic cylinder. Now this is basically the muscles, and well, much like without muscles, your body wouldn't even be able to move, so it's a good thing we have this to let our pneumatic system move. So that's basically a simple pneumatic system, and I'll see you later when we talk about how the controllers work. So I actually realized that my clamp wasn't strong enough to hold onto here because, I mean, it's very loose, so I'm actually going to take this other um, piece of scrap wood and it's going to act as a support for it so it doesn't move around as much. So let's screw it right in. All right, so now that it's all nice and stiff and it's not going anywhere, we can progress to the next step. So now you're going to want to take your air hoses and insert them into the fittings on the cylinder. And once you're done with that, you can take out your solenoid valve. I got this one off Amazon, so I'll leave the link down in the description below. And it doesn't actually come assembled, so you're going to want to screw in all the fittings. And you definitely want them to be as tight as possible, because if it's not tight enough, you will risk having air leaks, and you will have less air pressure, meaning it will be less strong and fast. Next, take the cylinder that you just had and hook it up to the air hoses. And it should just lock in nice and easy, and if it doesn't, check again. Next, take your air hose and attach this fitting. This fitting will allow the air hose to connect to the compressor. So I'm connecting my air hose to the compressor and... So the piston actually went up, so that means that the air is, of course, going through. To 
To connect the head to the cylinder, I'm using these two metal pieces. I have no idea what they're called, but I'm going to screw them together to create a strong and firm armature for the head because this thing will be pretty violent. And now I'm taking a couple more bolts to ensure that these won't slide out of place. And this is nothing but an extra precaution, but we want to be as safe as we can be, so I'm just going to screw these on right here. And now it's time for the head. So next we are going to take this mask I got off Google's Productions here. I filled it with spray foam a while back, and now that is hardened. Um, and we are going to stick this right here, the thing we made, right into the foam. Um, and But first we're going to pierce it with a knife. So we'll just do that right now. Like so. So now that will make it easier to take this and put it into there, but first we are going to fill it with some glue. So now I've got my glue and I'm just gonna absolutely fill up the hole we just made. I'm sure there's some easier ways to go about doing this whole thing, but this is basically just what we had access to. And now we just take our armature and insert it into the now glue filled hole. And now through the holes of the metal thing, we are going to screw right into the foam. And this is just to be completely certain that it will not be falling off. And to add even more certainty on top of that, we added a zip tie and another zip tie and another zip tie and another zip tie and a bunch more zip ties. What can't these things fix? Now, as we wait for the glue to dry, I'm gonna add some hinges to the garbage can lid. And as you can see, I also have my dad to help me. But enough with this boring voiceover, let's do a montage. a bit off camera, um, just some boring stuff, just screwing in some pieces of wood. But basically, I added these two pieces for stability and this one on the bottom, just for some extra stability once again. And this will actually make it so we can just slide it right into our garbage can. And it'll actually stay there. We don't need to screw it in. And it's easy. We can just take it out when we need to do anything with it. So what actually happened is, uh, yeah, we were not secure enough and this actually just came out. So ignore everything I just said. Yes, we are going to have to screw these in. A few moments later. All right, so we got one screw, two screws, three screws. We should be set to go, except I actually do have a couple more things that I need to fix. So you may have noticed that when he comes up, the cylinder can actually spin around, meaning that his head is unstable and it could be turned around, and we don't want that happening. So to fix it, we actually took an elastic band and hooked it to that same metal thing that we put on earlier, and then also hooked it onto one of the wood pieces that is stabilizing it, and it works pretty well. The mask can no longer turn around. And then for the last step for this video, we hooked a little bungee cord to the lid so the lid will not fall backwards. So that is all we are going to be doing for today. And if this video gets, say, 50 likes, I'll do a part two where I show you how to completely automate this animatronic using the peekaboo controller. Because in the video I'm about to show you, it's actually not automated and my dad is just controlling it behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's get right to the demo.